I in church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful day God has given us. Great sunshine. We thank all of you who are here in our parking lot. I pull up park and praise. Thank you for being so faithful. Thank you for your commitment to the Lord and to the Warner Temple A.M. Zion Church. Bless those of you who are watching us by way of social media. We ask that you might share this message with others. And we ask that you will continue to pray that a special offer for our friends, our neighbors in Hades and throughout the United States who are affected by Hurricane Ida. Also, we want to offer Christian sympathy to Alicia Poole and her family as she lost her sister this week. Her funeral services will be on Wednesday at 1 o'clock at the Green, um, Green Lawn Memorial Cemetery. On October the 2nd is our fourth missionary mass meeting. It will be virtual. Um, yours truly will be. But it's the presiding elders appreciation. That will be at 3 o'clock. That information is on the screen as, as well. Let us continue to pray for our sick and. Hospice, and um, she asked that we might continue to pray for him. Also, continue to pray for Sister Josie James, um, Teresa Watkins, William Wooten, Brother John, and of course, Miss Lily Johnson. I did get a report card from Kamaya Bird. Kamaya Bird is in the sixth grade. Miss Wooten sent me her report card, and she's at Roland Grice Middle School, sixth grade. She got all 100s in every we want to share that. I even got a good news note from Zariah. Zariah got a good grade in college. I'm saying, wow. Yes, sir. So we're excited about that. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. I ask you now, God, to may what we say and do be acceptable in your sight. I ask you now, God, that through song, through word, through prayer, through all that happens on this moment, that it might be pleasing to you, that it might draw someone just a little closer to you. But we ask all these things in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. so good to us. Um, let, me, let me remind you of the municipal elections for mayor and members of the city council. If you need a registration to vote, you can pick those up in the office or you can see Mrs. Green. If you're 18, you're eligible to vote. Even if you've completed a felony sentence, including any probation, parole, or post-release supervision, or received pardon, you are eligible to register and vote. So we also encourage you to know that early voting starts Thursday, October the 14th through Saturday, October the 30th. 
Again, if you want to get voter registration forms, you may pick those up in the church office, or you may see Miss Sonya Green, who's here in our parking lot. I'd like to share with you from a familiar passage of Scripture. It's the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, <coughs> verses 30 through 37. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. And perhaps most of you will know this story. It's called the Parable of the Good Samaritan. The Parable of the Good Samaritan. And it starts out with a lawyer raising a question to Jesus. Now the Bible says he raises this question to test Jesus. But when we study this scripture, most theologians believe that it wasn't really to test Jesus. It was a sincere question. He wanted to know, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds to the man and says, well, what does the law say? A, a teacher of the law, a lawyer, you know the commandments, you know the Torah, the 613 rules, the do's and don'ts in the Old Testament, in the first five books of the Bible. What does the law say? And he responds, the law says, you're to love your neighbor as yourself, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. And Jesus says, you've answered correctly. Do this and you'll live. And then the Bible says, in order that the man might justify himself, raises the question to Jesus and says, but who is my neighbor? Now, he raises the question to justify himself, not, not to put Jesus on the spot, as some people seem to think. Not to say, hey, Jesus, I'm smarter than you, but just to get some clarity. Help, help me out. Help me out. Because I know I perhaps have done the other things. I've loved God with all my heart. I, I love my neighbors and all that. But, but really, who is my neighbor? And so Jesus responds in this light. Luke chapter 10, I'm going to begin with verse number 30. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarius, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, the young ruler, the lawyer said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. I want to talk just for a few moments from the subject. It could have been me. It could have been me. Father, may you move Clifford out of the way and send the real preacher so that God, when we leave this place, we might go back to our homes and live better lives. Speak now, my Father, for thy servant hears, and he will obey. Amen. It could have been me. As I mentioned to you earlier, this passage of Scripture is the most popular parable Jesus tells. Most people have heard it before. We, as a matter of fact, there's a law that we have in our country called the Good Samaritan Law, which means that if I find somebody in trouble and I do what I think is best for them, they can't sue me. Okay. 
And so this lawyer raises a question to Jesus and he says, but, but what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds to him, as I said earlier, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your might. It, it's in the Torah. It's in the commandments. It's in the first five books of the Old Testament. There were 613 do's and don'ts that the lawyer understood, and the lawyer tried to live up to that account, tried to live up to all of those do's and don'ts. And then Jesus said, that's right, do that and you'll live. But then the young man says, in order to justify himself, one writer says to test Jesus, it's really to ask a sincere question, but who really is my neighbor? And Jesus tells this parable. A man who had been going from Jerusalem to Jericho, Jerusalem north, Jericho south, 17 mile stretch, a 17 mile stretch of the road. This, this section of Jerusalem to Jericho, this road was, was really a road that you didn't want to travel by yourself. It was a road that if you were going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, you would go in a, 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 um, like a carpool, not a carpool, but you'd go in a caravan. You, you'd go with a partner, especially if you were taking valuables. Because see, from Jerusalem to Jericho, within that 17 miles, there was a stretch where thieves could hide behind rocks and trees and in caves, and they would sneak out and catch you and rob you and leave you half dead. As a matter of fact, this distance from Jerusalem to Jericho was known as the way of blood. It's similar to what sometimes people have heard about the history of where we live and they call do good and should be able to help somebody. But when he comes by, he sees the man. But the Bible says he walks by on the other side. The trap. dead and when I go to help him somebody would rob me or maybe he thought if he was really dead then he couldn't help him but either way he walks by on the other side and then a Levite comes by he sees the man looks at him but he does the same thing he walks by on the other side the Levite, he was a church leader. The Levite, he was one who was responsible for taking care of the temple, setting things up for the priest. The Levite, in our day, he'd be a deacon, a trustee, a class leader, a choir leader, um, a church member. He'd be either, any of us. That's what the Levite was. But he sees the man and he walks by on the other side. Then a Samaritan comes by. A Samaritan. A Samaritan is a mixed breed. A Samaritan is a person who's half Jew and half Gentile. A Samaritan is one who, when the Assyrians came and took over the northern kingdom and they captured them when it was time to be released those who stayed cho chose to stay because they had intermarried with her and she says why are you talking to me because I know you but And in who Jews didn't like at all.
But this Samaritan comes by. He sees the man. As to him. Pours oil. Wine. Show. So he walks. Him on the man's wounds. Now you got to understand this man. And is in his position. Rip his clothes. So he wounds. He takes oil. And then he does him on his donkey. Now what he's gonna ride and I'm gonna walk. When he gets to the end, he takes Two silver coins. Oh. Oh. I will I don't want you to miss this. Watch. The lawyer couldn't even say the Samaritan. The lawyer couldn't say the Samaritan, because see, the lawyer being a Jew understood that he didn't like Samaritans. As a matter of fact, the word good and Samaritan never came in the same sentence. Instead of that Samaritan, he calls out the one who showed compassion. Let me just put a note here. You may do Continue to do good. Anyhow. Do good anyhow. And so we note then that the lawyer understands that I can't be that neighbor. Mm. Oh, I know. See, the lawyer was kind of confused in the sense that he thought that, yeah, I do love God with all my heart. I do do want to give him my heart, my mind, my soul, and my body, and I love my neighbor as myself, but, but I really can't be that guy. Mm. I can't be that, that, I can't, I can't be that one. And, and perhaps, perhaps you and I know that that's true for us. It, it's, it's really difficult to be that guy. It's difficult to be that Samaritan because have you ever noticed there are too many homeless people around? Have you noticed there are too many folks needy? There are too many people in trouble. Have you ever noticed whenever you, you give to one crisis, another one comes right around the corner? Here we are rallying for Ida victims. No doubt next week there'll be another group of victims. 
Have you ever noticed that in this life there are earthquakes and tornadoes and fires and flood and humanly it's impossible. Even though I want to give all I have, even, even though I want to keep giving and giving and giving, it's really impossible mm, to meet all the needs. And so no doubt we all fall short. Oh, you, you can see, for example, have you ever noticed that we kind of fall short and sometimes we get an attitude? I don't know about you, but have you ever watched a man push a cart with all of his earthly possessions in it and you kind of say in your mind, take that cart back to the store? <laughs> you ever seen folks hold the sign and they'll say, help me, and you might want to say in your mind, the Lord helps those who help themselves. Well, first of all, correction, that's not in the Bible, okay? And then you may see somebody, like, for example, the other day I went to a food giveaway, and this man came up with a bag, and the lady from the church who was giving away free food that she got, and the man came up with the bag, and she started saying, didn't you just come to the line? I thought, didn't you just have a bag? This your second time? And she was just chewing him out. And he said, well, ma'am, I'm trying to get it for a neighbor. Because we're, we're not there. We all seem to fall short. Mm. But what I've learned about life is if it had not been but for the grace of God, mm, if it had not been but for the grace of God on our lives and in our lives, we could have been that man standing there with the second bag. If it had not been but for the grace of God, it could have been me. I could have been the one pushing the cart with all of my earthly possessions inside. It could have been me. I could have been the one pleading for a handout. It could have been me. I could have been the one piling all of my earthly possessions and hiding it under the park bench. It could have been me planning my next meal on whether or not somebody will give me 32 cents. It could have been me picking through the trash picking through the garbage, hoping to find a half a sandwich or some Gatorade that somebody left in the, in, the, in the plastic container. It could have been me going through the trash cans, looking for something to wear, shoes to put on my feet, looking for something to keep me warm. It could have been me standing on the street corner with a psychotic episode, yelling and screaming, at somebody who's not there. It could have been me, parentless, standing on the corner, my mom and dad thinking that I'm dead to them. It could have been me, the one who plundered through the house one time too many, and mom and dad said, you can no longer come in here. As a matter of fact, if you step on the ground, I'll have you arrested. It could have been me, with pants soiled, stained, stinky, sticky, smelling like somebody peed on them or somebody peed on me. It could have been me. Folks who see me standing at the corner with my sign and people pass me. They don't ever ask my name. They don't ever ask, can I call somebody for you? They don't ever ask. Is there anything I can do for you? They don't even ask, can I give you a sandwich? They don't even wave their window and wave at me. They look ahead as if I'm not standing there, as if I was a ghost. As a matter of fact, I've seen them. They would turn their radio up or they quickly get on the phone and pretend they're having a major message. It could have been me walking around the street with all of my earthly possessions in a box, my prized possessions in a box.
my my coat that, that keeps me warm in a box. My, my my drink I found in the trash can in a box. My my little snack that somebody threw out at me in a box. Uh, uh, it could have been me walking around with a box. It could have been me. With no place to live, it could have been me. Maybe, perhaps, perhaps there was some the hand that was dealt me. And it's not what hand you get, it's how you play it. And maybe I played my hand wrong. Perhaps it was because my parents did something before I was born. Perhaps it was because of something that happened with my grandfather and my grandmother. Perhaps it was just the fate of God that I'd be my feet hurt. I'm pain. I have pain that you would not even imagine from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. But this is where God has me right now. But I've shared this message because what you got to understand about the Good Samaritan is the Good Samaritan in this instant was not really just a Samaritan. Jesus wants us to remind the folks that we come across. He wants to remind us that I am the Good Samaritan. Jesus says, I am the one who will bind your wounds. I am the one who will heal you. I am the one who brings prodigal sons and daughters back home. I am the Good Samaritan. I lay down my life that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I am the Good Samaritan. And so what I've learned is that when I see people walking around with their empty possessions in their box, I kind of pray for them and I say, Lord, but maybe that's not the end of their story. Mm. Oh, I'm so glad that God brings prodigal sons back home. I'm so glad that God can clean people up. I'm so glad that God can straighten folks out. I'm so glad that by God's grace and his mercy, mm, he turns lives around. And our responsibility, our goal is to not give up on the man pushing the cart. Our goal is to try to be that good Samaritan as Jesus would have been. See him, have compassion, and try to, man, try to bandage his wound. Our goal may be something as simple as, hey, brother, is there somebody I can call for you? Mm. Is there a family member that I need to just call them and tell them I saw you and just let them know where you are? Mm. Hey, brother, hey, sister, can I... Can I offer you a sandwich? No, no, you can't get in the car because I don't know what you might do to me because you know that, but I'll tell you what I'll do. If you tell me what you want to eat, I'll go get it for you. I'll bring it right back to you. I did that the other day. I saw a brother who was on the street and he said, hey man, how you doing? I said, how you feeling, man? And I always like to ask their name. And his name was Greg. And Greg said, the white boy said, hey, I'm, I'm doing okay, but I'm hungry. And I said, well, what, what do you want to eat, Greg? I said, there's a McDonald's down there. He says, okay, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not eating meat this week, but this is what I want you to do. If you would, would you go get me an egg McMuffin with just the egg and the cheese? And then give me a cold coffee. I said, you want any sugar? Nope, just a cold coffee and an egg McMuffin without the sausage. I said, yes, sir, Greg. And I went and picked up the egg McMuffin and the coffee. It cost me about $5, you know. And I came back by and I said, here, Greg, here it is. Can I, can I pray for you? It could have been the rose. Have easily changed. He could have been asking me, "What do I want to eat?" It could have changed. It could have been me had it not been for the grace of God in a 
and on our lives. So my challenge to each of us is that we not give up on the Gregs. Our challenge is that we continue to lift them up to God and we pray that God would turn them around before it's everlasting too late. Our prayer is that they too, like we have, come to Jesus. That they come to Jesus and that they come to Jesus right now. Because you know, and I just want to say this to those who are in the audience and those who are listening to me by way of social media, he can save you. Mm. He can deliver you. Or it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how bad the life is situation. It doesn't matter how dreary or dark it looks right now. Jesus is able to deliver you. And that's why he died. In order that you and I might have a right to this young lawyer to eternal life. So what must I do to have eternal life? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. But who is my neighbor? Anyone that God allows to cross your path that you could help, that you could serve, that you could give, that you could be a benefit to. That's your neighbor. And most importantly, thank you, Jesus. Because if it had not been but for your grace and for your mercy, I could be right now sleeping under somebody's tree, hiding in somebody's shed, pushing a cart, trying to find my next meal. I could have been one of those standing on the street corner holding a sign saying, help, I'll, I'll work for food, or holding a sign that says, God bless you. And so as we are challenged, this, it could have been me, Global Mission Sunday. The first thing I want to do is extend an invitation to you. If by chance you're here and the Lord is speaking to you, even on social media, and you want to give your life to the Lord, today's a great day to do it. So I extend that invitation to you even right now. Or if you're here and you've already given your life to the Lord, but you want to make this place your church home, we'd love for you to come. If you're here, you can come out now. If you're on social media, you can send that message and say, yeah, preacher, I, I want to make one of my church home, or I want to find a church somewhere near me. We'd love for you to come. And then, of course, by chance you're here, you need prayer, we'd love to pray for you. Put it on the, on the screen. We'll definitely call you back and be in prayer with you. Okay. And then the last thing that we'll do this morning is on your way out. Offering is our global missions offering. This offering is going to go to help those who were affected by Ida in the hurricane in Haiti and throughout the United States. We just celebrated this week, Hurricane Florence, three years ago. Just three years ago, we were in the same position that many of our friends in New Orleans and in Hades are in right now. But God has been good. Can I get a witness that God has been good? Yeah. God has been good to us. He's been great to us. And so we want to be a blessing to those who are struggling even right now. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Because mm. God, we recognize that we are where we are, not because um, we did everything right. My God. Mm. Not because we crossed every T, not because we dotted every I, not because we made all the right choices, but by your grace and your mercy, you have us where we are. So God, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are struggling right now. We pray, God, that our gifts will help them in, in the little way that they can. God, we pray for the gifts that they'll be receiving all across the country and the world. God, we pray that you'll help them to not give up, that, that, 
that there is hope that you are still a way maker and that you can provide and you will take care of them. God, we thank you for what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt. We pray, God, that you'll continue to bless Warner Temple, those who are here, those under the sound of my voice, that we might be the instrument of change that you're causing us to be. We give you thanks and we give you praise in the mighty matchless and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. God, you've been so good to me. And now unto him who is able. He's able to keep you from falling, and he's able to present you falling before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only one. forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Continue to wear your mask. Practice social distancing. Please, if you have not been vaccinated, get the vaccination. God bless you, and may heaven smile on you. He's good. He's good.